Good morning all, little grey packages, and that can only mean one thing, it's post bag. So I'm going to start with these two, I believe they're the same item, or very similar, there might be differences, let's check it out. It's an OLED with four pins, so it's an I2C OLED, let's open the other one, which is an I2C OLED. Now what I'm interested in um is which way around vcc and ground are this one is vcc then ground what are these and which is the most common layout well despite these being from completely different sellers they are actually the same part number this oh one eight four six b so they're identical and they're vcc ground they're actually the same as this and they're actually the same i think as this layout which I used but I do have some which are ground VCC just got to watch that let's open these up and take a look at them do they have for example um, address yes they have a little link there for address changing uh, that's hideous look at the angle of those pins not good let's check this one out oh, I can't cut through there very easily with my completely blunt knife it's very safe because it's completely blunt um this one is it the same yeah it's identical actually i think this one has got bent in the post and i should be able to straighten it because they weren't wonderfully packed were they just dumped loose into one of those gray envelopes okay let's see if they work oh and what color are they Oh, I can't see if they work on here, because this little OLED goes ground VCC. So I can't put them in here because they'll blow up. I wonder if I can load in an OLED running a millis count on here, knowing that this one goes VCC ground. I should have marked that on there. I have on the new version of this, which is in. Oh, and I changed this to have four lines using a slightly more compact font for percent humidity, temperature, Celsius, volts and amps. They're dummy fields at the moment, but that's how it's going to look. I found this old Nano in a box and it does seem to be a tighter fit in here. I don't know whether it's got thicker pins because it's older and they're sort of reducing the size of the pins ever so slowly over time maybe, but that does seem to be quite a good fit in there. So hopefully I'll only have to hold the OLED at a funny angle. And I can get this to work. I'm just running up the Arduino software. I don't really... Oh, here we are. Yep, it's uploading. Yep, there we go. Some flickers. And then it'll transfer to the other one while it verifies. That's quite slow, wasn't it? I've got a feeling this is the old... Well, it is the old bootloader because I've had to select it. Right, that should be the OLED program in there. Now, is it going to talk to this OLED? I'll probably have to reboot it to initialize the OLED. Yeah, okay. That's not too good. I hope this is VCC ground. I'm pretty sure it is. Oh, that's a bit tighter in there. Maybe that'll work better. Let's reboot the Arduino. Oh, yeah, there we go. So that one's blue. And this one. If I can get it in there and hold it at an angle and also reboot that ain't anything so why is that not behaving itself let's have another go oh yeah there we go oh and that one's white that's interesting did i order blue and white let's have a look so this one is white 12864 oled uh 0.96 inch about an inch diameter a bit less Oh, that's so obvious. Why did I even say that? $2.43, free shipping from Brovo P3. And the other one, oh, is also white. 128 by 64 OLED. Well, it's the same thing, isn't it? Uh, that was 267 These prices might have changed, actually, because I think these are the prices now, not necessarily what I paid. I just went for the two cheapest ones from sellers I'd never heard of. This one is Sweet and Light. But they all seem to work don't they how about this one which has the red tag on it um which was one i already had what does that do reset 
Will it work? Oh yeah, oh that one's white. Okay then, well, moving on. Okay, next up, and this one <laughs> is going to take some explaining. But I'll do my best. It is this. Let's open it up. It is an FPGA. Let's get in a bit closer on this FPGA. It's an Altera Cyclone 2. Now this is an old FPGA and in fact the latest software suite um, from Altera doesn't actually support this Cyclone 2 so you have to load up old software to even get this thing to run. Now how did I suddenly become interested in FPGAs? Well it's a long story. Ever since I put my video content on library uh, I kind of got into the cryptocurrency side of things that library offers. Then I started looking into cryptocurrency mining using CPUs, GPUs, ASICs and then FPGAs. And then I got hooked on FPGAs, not specifically because I thought this would be able to mine cryptocurrency. That would be very complicated to achieve. But I just got hooked on it and started watching videos on FPGAs and it all looked like quite fun building logic blocks in these things. Anyway, that was the sort of route to this. Quite where I'll take this, I don't know. The other problem with this is it's not very visual. And if you look at all the FPGA videos on YouTube, they haven't got many views because there's actually not really very much to show. Now FPGAs have mm, dozens, I suppose you could say, hundreds even maybe, of I.O. pins. And there's a sort of matrixing system where you can allocate your logic pretty much to any I.O. pin. So I thought it should be possible to build this in an FPGA. It has a lot of outputs, of course. This has, uh, oh, is it five eights, I think? No, four tens, that's right, 40 LEDs. This is the uh, 10,000 year shift register uh, where you take outputs far down the shift register line, put them through an exclusive OR gate and feed them back into the input. Now you could model that in an FPGA and have masses and masses of LEDs connected to this thing. I'm not quite sure how I would go about doing the, the link from this to an LED array, maybe a PCB for that. But anyway, yeah, I thought that would be a challenge to model the shift registers in here and have this do this count thing. Now I bought this because it was cheap. And as I say, it does require old software uh, IDE, like a package, to program this. I can go back even further actually, because there are these things called CPLDs, which are sort of the forerunners to FPGAs. Um, or I could go forwards, they've got boards um, that are more expensive, but they've got the newer chips on them, which are supported by the current Quartus software package. Uh, so I'm not really sure which direction to go in. And I've done this before, bought things like this, and then never really done anything with it. So how far I'll get with this, I don't know. So this is the item. It is the Altera FPGA Cyclone, Cyclone 2. And then that's the part number. And it calls it a development board, but there's not much on it. Um, you can get some of these where you get the little programmer, which plugs into one of these sockets, which is the USB blaster JTAG programmer. I didn't get that. <laughs> and I will need a JTAG programmer, so I can't do much with this until I buy that. You can buy them on their own. Uh, $11.85. Five. I got this one, a free shipping from DIY Box. But you can get um, CPLDs, which are sort of primitive, simpler versions of FPGAs. This one's the Altera Max 2. Pretty sure it's Altera. Yeah, that says Altera on it. Uh, and this one is just $5.86. Still got lots and lots of pins on there to play with. That could probably do the... Um, the 10,000 year shift register as well. Maybe I'll get that. There's the JTAG programmer socket. Right, let's do this one. And it's an old one. And it says on it USB breakout. Oh, lots of USB breakouts by the look of it. Mmm, okay. So these are little USB micro sockets just soldered onto a board and then you get the breakout of the five connections. Now, what was my original idea for this? I think what it was, was some crazy idea of putting lots of power banks, five volt power banks in series using these things. 
um, so that you've got a high voltage from those power banks and then transforming that down to lower voltage, higher current. Some, <laughs> some bonkers idea like that. Then I thought, well, maybe they could be useful on something like this. So rather than using a Nano, you could use a Pro Mini and have this little board. It's on the floor now. Should we open another one? Uh, this little board on here to provide the power input socket and then a Pro Mini which of course doesn't have the uh, USB socket or the, of course the USB to serial converter. That was my second idea. Anyway I've got 10 of these now. Yeah here they are. 10 pieces 5 volt micro USB breakout. Uh, these were just 199 for 10 and they came from Shenglong Z. So there we are, these are today's post bag items. Now, big thanks to my sponsor, JLC PCB. I have some new PCBs coming real soon. And also a big thanks to my patrons, um, some of whom are now my friends. If you want to become a patron, you can click this link here. There are another couple of videos up here if you want to watch more of my stuff. And if you want to subscribe to my channel, why aren't you subscribed already? Then you can click this link here. Cheerio.